Hey guys, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist, and this thing is a foam roller. Even if you don't know what this is, I guarantee that your more athletic clients do. Your marathon runners and your triathletes. And I can almost guarantee that they're using them wrong. They're using them to torture themselves, to crank out their IT bands, and to cause themselves a lot of pain when that isn't really necessary. I'd like for you to be able to have good conversations with these clients about how to alter their foam rolling techniques in less painful ways that will be friendlier to their recovering bodies. I'd also like for you to start using these. You can find these in Target or Walmart or on Amazon. You can check the description if you'd like to see a link. These have become very popular with runners, so you can find them pretty much everywhere, sporting goods stores, places like that. But I want you to use this because it's an excellent self-massage tool. This can give you some freedom and some movement in your thoracic vertebrae that you may not otherwise be able to get, especially when you're trying to massage yourself. This can create broad deformations in your tissue that can be very gentle, but they can also be very helpful when you've got a sore low back, maybe from doing too much massage in a week, or sore shoulders, or a sore upper back. This can be useful for all those. This is also great for leg work. I haven't found many applications for the arms, but I'm sure that exists out there. And one good reason to start using these yourself is so that you can become fluent in talking about these with your massage clients. You can tell them ways to change their own foam rolling routines, or you can suggest that they introduce this into their self-care practice. So I'm going to start with some tips and tricks on how to use this for yourself and for your own self-care. And then we're going to talk about how to talk to your clients about how to use it for different kinds of pain, including IT band pain, low back pain, and lower leg pain, including shin splints, charley horses, and plantar fasciitis. Let's get started. By the way, if you'd like to skip ahead, please check the time codes down in the description. Now, first of all, how do you get onto one of these things? I like to just sit on it, Potsy, and then I can roll down into it. But you and your clients might be more comfortable sitting it behind you and then laying down on it and then using your abs to support yourself. From here, you can do some really great upper back work. So allow your arms to relax. Let them lay on your abdomen or your chest or down to your sides. And roll out your thoracic spine. You might feel some popping, and this should just feel like a nice, broad, easy massage. If this is painful at all for you, then this thing might be too hard. Don't get the kind that has all the knobs on it or spikes or whatever they're doing with these things these days to make them even more torturous. No, instead get a kind that is somewhat soft, that gives when you press into it. So if you've got prominent spinous processes, this might not be comfortable for you unless you use one that's soft enough. Or you may have to do unilateral work, which we'll talk about in a second. But for this easy beginner work, keep your abs tight, bring your torso about level with the ground, and gently roll out your upper back. As you do, take easy deep breaths, and that will change the shape of your ribcage and it will change the nature of the massage. And once you've done a few passes like that, you can change the feeling of this massage even further and hit some of this lateral tissue, especially out into the rotator cuff, just by bringing your hands up and cradling your head. Just taking a few pounds of pressure off of your skull and you'll feel this further out laterally. You've created a flatter base across your upper back. So you'll be getting a little bit of rotator cuff work as well as getting those rhomboids and lower and mid trapezius from different angles in different configurations. Now, I don't go onto my cervical spine here. I just stay a few vertebrae short of that because I don't want it to take my full weight. Now, you can make this feel a little bit deeper and you can target specific structures by rolling a little bit over to one side. So I'm gonna cross my arms right here, and I'm just going to take my weight just a little bit over to the left. And now, I'm really hitting one set of erector spinae muscles, and I can target this area. I can target my scapula and my rotator cuff. 
I can come into this even further, but this can feel quite sharp. This may be something either you need to work into or that you just can't do. If you find any of this painful, then do back off. You can also work on these lateral most thoracic and scapular muscles just by coming into this lounging position. Ah, and you could roll in this position, but this can feel quite sharp. So I recommend for you and for any beginner, including any clients that you're talking to, that you just relax into the spot that feels important. So right now I'm on this area of serratus anterior, as well as the lats. I can come a little further toward the axilla, and now I'm working on the teres muscles, as well as lats as well. And just take easy breaths and wait for that intensity level to slowly drop on its own, and that should take just a few nice deep breaths, and then you can move on. One of my favorite applications is the butt, is the glutes. So, to do this, you just sit on the foam roller, and you sit kind of crab style. You ever do crab races when you were in a elementary school? That was fun. You don't get to do that when you're, a, when you're an adult. Anyway, you just roll out both sides of your butt at once, coming up onto the sacrum, and then back down, passing those ischial tuberosities, and then up again. And to target this more specifically, turn over to one side, and target a single cheek. So right now I'm coming down past the ischial tuberosity and then up toward the iliac crest as well as the SI joint on that left side. I can come all the way over to the side and really give myself some nice pressure in this lateral pelvis here. So we're hitting gluteus medius and minimus and we're coming up all the way to this iliac crest. You can also play with the angle of your legs here. So I'm just going to lay down completely. If you ever need to change the position of this, just raise up and change it manually. And now that I'm relaxed into this position, the foam roller is under my sacrum or maybe a little bit further inferiorly. Then I can rock my femurs here and I can get some nice loosening up in my hips. I love this whenever I've got a sore or tight low back because it's very gentle and it allows you to go at your own pace rather than having to force anything. And you can do this with your low back as well. So position this under your low back, so under your lumbar region just above the lumbosacral junction and just gently rocking. So that's a good routine for you as a massage therapist to one, familiarize yourself with foam rolling and also to deal with some of this back stuff that can start to creep in, this shoulder stuff that can start to creep in as you do lots and lots of massage. But what about for clients who have specific pain needs? Well, if you've got a triathlete or a marathoner, ask them if they already have one of these. I bet they do. And if they do, then during your massage, you can point out muscles that they might not think to focus on. For instance, if I'm working with someone with IT band pain, I'll point out as I'm working on the glutes that they can do this similar steamrolling, if I'm doing a steamrolling type move, that they can do something similar with their foam roller and that that's going to affect their IT band. The same thing with this TFL, the tensor fascia lata. They're going to need to turn toward their abdomen, not all the way, just most of the way, and then they can work up toward that ASIS. You'll probably need to point it out on them. And then down into their anterior lateral leg just a bit. And they may not think to work with this lateral region of the pelvis. So point out all of that feel good and important tissue over here on the lateral pelvis, that gluteus medius and minimus. And tell them that they can roll into that. And if they find something that feels especially important, they can do what we did earlier, which is changing the position of their leg. So I'm just rocking my leg here. Or you can just sit and wait, wait for that intensity to dial itself down. For clients with low back pain, it would just be more of that butt self-massage, that glute massage, as well as working with that lateral hip region. And if you've got someone who has shin splints, I bet you a million bucks they've got tight calves, 
If you've got someone who has Charlie horses, I bet you a million bucks they've got tight calves. If you have someone with plantar fasciitis, same thing. So get them to work on their calves. If they've got especially sensitive calves, have them work on both at the same time. This will make it a little bit less intense. They'll kind of have to scoot their butt just a bit to get the entire low leg. Or if they're in really good shape, they can just wee all the way down. And tell them to work on different aspects of this low leg. So splay your legs out, and now you're working on this lateral aspect. So that more lateral head of the gastrox, as well as getting into soleus just a bit. If they turn out even further, they can get into that fibularis group. And same thing with turning their feet inward so that they're a little pigeon-toed. Now, if they're not feeling a lot or if you're not feeling a lot, you can cross one leg over the other, let this one relax, and now the other leg gets twice as much weight. And you can still do those different leg positions, such as coming out toward the side. Just tell people to ease into this. Let them know that they don't need that pain for this to work. All right, all that's it. Just realize that when you're starting out with this, that you should be as gentle as possible, especially for the first few sessions, and to limit your session time. Keep this to under five minutes. Just do a few rolls up and down your back, up into your upper back, maybe curling over to one side, do a few passes onto your shoulder blade, and then down into your low back and hips, and stop it at five minutes. Because you have so much access to yourself, you don't want to be doing as much as you would during a full 60 minute or 90 minute massage. You could overdo this if you were to do a half hour of this every day. I don't recommend that. And with both you and your clients, please do be kind to yourselves. If this hurts, then you either need a softer foam roller or you need to find ways of taking weight off of your own body. You're using your own body weight to massage yourself, so see if you can lay a body part down or change the angle of your upper body so that it's not quite so straight down on the foam roller. And play around with this. All the stuff that I know about foam rolling I learned from just playing around. So find out different angles. See if you can work on your own chest. See if you can work on your arms. If you come up with neat routines to work on your arms, please post a video so that I can see that too. And let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you have your own recommendations for foam rolling. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.